Good evening. Thanks so much for joining us. We are breaking into your regular scheduled program programming to bring you the results from the primary election. And here are the numbers. We're going to take a look right now at the race for U.S. Senate, the Democratic primary. Brian Schatz now with 1,100, uh, 115,397 votes. Colleen Hanabusa with 113,628 votes, a difference of 1,769. So as it stands with this, Brian Schatz is the Democratic nominee going into the general election. We want to head up straight over to the Big Island. Our Brenton Awa has been there for the last few days. He joins us now with Colleen Hanabusa. Brenton. Hey guys, we're out here in the KL with Colleen Hanabusa. Colleen, you just saw the results. Uh, your reaction? Well, you know, the, the people have voted, they've spoken, and I think that uh, we are, it's unfortunate that these elections came out the way they did in terms of for the people of Pune, but notwithstanding all that, and there are still people who feel disenfranchised, but uh, these are the, the results that uh, we have to deal with, and my campaign will, of course, evaluate it, but I think that uh, it, it's a very interesting situation where we have 2,000 votes, or, or actually 1,700 votes, that's going to determine the United States Senate race. If when you look back, would you do anything differently? It was such a close uh, battle. It was such a close race. Would you do? Would you change anything? Well, well, I think that what this race showed was uh, a combination of things, but it also did show that. Uh, when you have a lot of uh, uh, mainland interests coming in and they can pour in a lot of money, uh, that it, it did make, I believe it did make a difference in this election. But having said that, the people still individually voted the way they wanted to vote, uh, depending on whatever they heard and whatever they believed. And as a result of that, this is, this is the results of this election. Congresswoman, talk about the low turnout and how much that affected everything and certainly the irregularities. Well, you know, those are always a concern, but that's really a major concern for the people and, and uh, the felt fact that they felt so disenfranchised. I think one of the things that I was most touched with were the, the, the people who came from other districts who wanted to vote and were unable to vote. I think that their stories were heart-wrenching, uh, and they did not understand why they could not vote and why somehow no one has been fighting for them out there. You know, the, the thank yous that I got was the fact that we try to, to say that to, to the courts as well as to, to everyone concerned that in fact these people are in a devastated situation. They just don't want to think about this right now. Will you challenge these results? I have no idea what we will do, but uh, it, it clearly is a situation that, you know, that was a request made by, by a lot of people here, was that to, to, keep, to keep on going because of the fact that they, they, want, uh, they want to have their vote counted. But those, you know, those, I don't know if people would feel that way a week from now or when their electricity is back on and, and they're able to move around. But notwithstanding, clearly, people are hurt and they are still hurting out here. And, and it is the districts that, uh, you, you know, you hear about Paradise Park, where we are. You hear about beaches and shores where the voting took place. But you don't hear so much about the, what happened in Kalapana, Leilani Estates, Kapoho, or, or, or um, Nana, Nana, Nana Valley. Those are the areas that were really hard hit, and those are the people who actually tried to vote today. And I heard of uh, Skupunas from Leilani who actually came and said they wanted to vote. But these are, this is, this is what an election is all about. Have you what thought about what your next chapter is in your political career at this point? No, I have not. I mean, I still am a member of Congress. I still have my term to, uh, to fill out, and I will do that as I've always done with the people of Hawaii in my heart and uh, acting in their best interest. What is your message to all those people? To which people? All of, all of your supporters, all the people out here. You know, I, I just want to say that uh, with every election, it always amazes me about your supporters. You know, we ran a grassroots campaign. We ran a campaign that, you know, we had a major money deficit, especially when you think about how much money was spent in this campaign. And we have come this far really because of them. You know, all our aunties and all our kapunas and, and all, the, all the guys who just came out and said, hey, 
we're there for you and 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 you know you sometimes i'm amazed when you especially in a statewide race when people don't know who you are really at the beginning i mean they know who you are but they don't have a relationship with you and yet they're willing to give their all for you i mean i think that that to me is one of the most uh, humbling and phenomenal things about elections it's the relationships that we create the relationships that we earn and you know i just want to say mahalo to everyone who has given their heart and soul to this election because there've been so many people who have done that all right thank you very much thank you Colleen. Colleen. Yeah, guys out here in KL, Colleen Halabusa expressing her feelings her thoughts on this election uh, we'll send it back to you we're going to have more coverage later tonight at 10 all right, thank you so much, Brenton. We're going to stick with the Big Island. Our Catherine Cruz is there awaiting Brian Schott's arrival. Catherine. We are here uh, in Hilo with the head of HGA, Randy Pereira. Randy, you've seen the numbers. You've heard uh, Colleen Hanabusa talk about not ready to say she's going to challenge. What do you think? Well, we'll leave that to Colleen Hanabusa, but uh, it's a great victory for Brian Schatz. We're very happy with the outcome, obviously, and voters had an opportunity to come out today. They did in numbers bigger than they did in 2012, and as a result, I think we have a legitimate election and a legitimate victory for Brian Schatz, and we're very happy with that. And the strategy, you folks had dialed it back a little bit? Uh, Absolutely, and I think that's a testament to, to why we supported Brian. His leadership suggested, he, he, he suggested to us that we wait until the election itself to actually politics. So we spent the entire week doing things that we have, uh, you know, we're just distributing food and water to the people in the district, and then we decided to campaign today. Uh, and I think that's a testament to Brian and his leadership. While the other side was openly campaigning through the entire week, we decided that it was more important to help the people. But here what, we are. What happens if there is a challenge? What's, how will your strategy go from here on in? I leave that to the lawyers, Catherine. You know, at this point, I think the people have spoken. We have an election result, and if there is a challenge, well, you know, it'll be fought out in the courts, and it won't be, you know, it, it'll be out of our hands, I suppose. What about the 600 votes, the other votes that are coming in? What are you thinking about that? You know, I, I don't know what to say. I, I think there are, have been a number of, of problems with the, with the election this year. And certainly, the postmortem is going to require some kind of assessment of the Office of Elections. But I'll leave it at that. You know, at this point in time, we're just very happy with the results tonight, and, and we're moving forward. That's that's what I think is important. Okay, and we're anxiously awaiting the candidate. Are we He's on his way. They're not very far from here. Um, certainly, he wanted to watch the results privately, but uh, he should be here any minute. He's ready to make a quick statement. Then, with fingers crossed, Hawaiian Airlines will be all off on a plane back to Oahu. Okay, see. the last flight, and it's, uh, it's time's ticking. Leaving soon. That's oh, right. Okay, there you have it from Hilo, uh, from the HGA headquarters where we were eagerly awaiting uh, Senator Brian Schott's arrival uh, with this latest uh, first uh, return, a very uh, commanding lead, and uh, we will see uh, how things go tonight. Back to you. Thank you so much, Catherine. Of course, Colleen Hanabusa, though, in that interview with Brent, and not ruling out the possibility of future legal challenges. Mm -hmm. Of course, she took that information and came right on our air, so she's probably still digesting those yes. numbers, as are we, and we want to share them with you right now. Here's a look at the statewide totals. Brian Schatz and Colleen Hanabusa, they stand apart by 1,769 votes. You'll remember that at that first count that we got last weekend, the difference was 1,635. So he made up over 100 votes to widen that gap. And now we're going to take a look at the Big Island numbers, Hawaii County statistics, as they've come in. And we see he has 16,358 votes. Colleen Hanabusa with 15,858 votes. And we also want to talk about Maui County right now. Colleen Hanabusa leading on Maui. 11,388. The difference there so slim. Brian Schatz with 11,166. And we say Brian Schatz has arrived at that Hilo house, and we're going to hear from him now. And you see him there, obviously, greeting supporters, lots of folks on the Big Island. Let's take a listen. 
came here tonight. I want to thank everybody on the Big Island. I want to thank everybody in Hilo. And I especially want to thank the people of Puna and the people of East Hawaii for teaching me a lot about the Big Island's heart. Uh, this was an extraordinary week for all of us. Uh, and the work that we all put in, not on the campaign side, but on the community side to help people to try to recover. This was a very difficult time for the people of Puna. And what I saw was people in Puna, people in West Hawaii, people in East Hawaii, people from Maui, Oahu, Kauai, pitching in to help our community recover. And it was one of my proudest moments as a Hawaii citizen, not as a United States Senator, but as a member of this community. It was such a pleasure to work shoulder to shoulder with all of you uh, to help uh, that community to recover. Now on the campaign, you guys did amazing. Give yourself a hand. You guys, you guys are so extraordinary. This group, there's a, there's a group on every island uh, celebrating. There are people uh, watching the internet and there are people across the state of Hawaii uh, who are thrilled with this result. We're so gratified uh, for the support that we've been able uh, to get. And uh, look, I want to especially uh, recognize my campaign co-chairs. One of them uh, is right here, Mary Matayoshi. Uh, Roland, Roland Casamina uh, and Norman Mizuguchi. They're an extraordinary uh, group of three people uh, who helped to guide us through this process. Uh, but all of and I'm looking at all of you, and I'm, I just, I, I could not be more grateful, more thankful for the opportunity uh, to serve Hawaii in the United States Senate. I also really want to thank my family. I want to thank uh, my mother and father who taught me about public service and taught me about how to define my success, which was uh, how much good you could accomplish for others. Uh, my mother and father taught me that from a very young age. I want to thank my brothers for pitching in. I want to thank especially uh, Linda, uh, my wife, who uh, uh, it has been extraordinary through this uh, extraordinarily difficult and exciting uh, process. Uh, and I, I, I'm hoping they're watching. I have a feeling they're watching. I want to thank Tyler and Mia. Tyler, uh, 10 years old. Mia, 6 years old. Uh, I'm coming home if the flight is on time. Uh, and if these guys let me uh, out of here on time. Uh, but we really want to say thank you to everybody. This is an extraordinary night. Senator, the emotion you're showing right now, the emotion you're showing right now, really demonstrates how hard fought a campaign this was against Representative Colleen Hanabusa. Okay, Did you was, expect this Scott much of a challenge, this close of a race? Uh, absolutely. You know, this is a very important race, and, uh, uh, and we have tremendous respect for our opponent. Uh, this was an important uh, race, and we're uh, glad that all the... Uh, uh, we ended up having two primary elections, actually, uh, which was an extraordinary thing. And even for the Big Island, which has the history of Bernard Akana and Dante Carpenter and all kinds of interesting things happens, I think they take the cake. What was the difference? <laughs> well, I think we worked really hard and our message came through. Uh, and we've got a great organization. Senator Schultz, what if there's a challenge? What if there's a challenge? Well, uh, uh, we'll see what happens. Right now, we're just thrilled uh, with the election results right now, and we're really, really gratified uh, that Puna came through, that Maui came through, uh, and that we uh, uh, have the result that we were hoping for. You rolled your sleeves up all week. You laid low. You had kept yeah. a low profile, volunteered a lot. You saw the hardship of the people of Puna. Today at the polls, a lot of people from Nanavale, Leilani State, Pohiki Road, wanting to come and vote, feeling they couldn't because they were turned away because they weren't in the two precincts. What recourse do they have? Well, it was very, very frustrating because a lot of people actually parked their car and came down, you know, a quarter of a mile, a half a mile to tell me, you know, I wanted to vote for you, uh, but I couldn't. It was an extraordinary uh, circumstance and uh, it was really tough. And so. Um, uh, we uh, are, are not the uh, umpires, uh, we're the players on the field, and we decided we were going to play by whatever rules were established uh, and, and fight hard, and that's what we did. Thanks very much, everybody. Aloha.
Senator Brian Schatz is going to be quickly running to Hilo Airport to catch that 9 o'clock flight back to Honolulu. As he says, we're not the umpires, we're just the players in this game when asked about any possible challenges. That really lies in the courts here in Hawaii and with the Hawaii voters. And I have a feeling that the umpires will be challenged as the days and weeks go on. Uh, when we look at how this election was handled, those extra votes coming in from Maui, there's a lot of people now questioning the whole process. We want to head over to Laura Yamada. She's at the state capitol now. Laura, what's the latest there? Yeah, I think, Yunji, uh, you've actually been following a lot of the tweets and whatnot that have been coming out, as well as some of the emails we've been getting about people saying, hey, uh, we were in some other areas in the Puna District that were affected, and, and we weren't able to vote. We don't think that's fair. We also um, asked some other questions to uh, state officials this evening, too, about the process, just hearing from them again as to the decisions they made and why. One, as to um, why they decided to hold the vote, uh, the primary election today, as opposed to waiting longer. There was 21 days that they had from uh, the primary uh, last week. And they said, you know what? We had an opportunity with it being a holiday, with the school being open, and we wanted to get this process over with. And they felt that because the access was cleared, that they were justified in holding the election uh, today. Also, we asked them about the uh, electronic ballots, why there weren't paper ballots. A lot of people, especially in the polling area, quest asking questions about that. They said same thing. They said, you know, it was just an easier, cleaner process. We were going to be able to get through it uh, faster and get those numbers out more quickly. So that also followed following the same thread as to their decisions on that. As you mentioned also, Maui, 800 votes um, not counted, added to all of this because of uh, some issues that they had with transmitting the, one of the final cards uh, last Saturday early in the morning. It was human error, uh, they said, but they got those numbers in there. And, um, as you guys have been going over the numbers, essentially about the same. I apologize if you went and broke down the county numbers, but I took a look at it too. Big Island County, a difference of only uh, 500, excuse me, Hawaii County, 500 votes between the two. Maui County, a difference of only 222 votes between the two. As far as possibly contesting this race, there is a six day uh, window of time to do that up until August 21st. And as we heard earlier, uh, Congresswoman Colleen Honabusa is saying she's not sure what she's going to be doing next. So, as you mentioned, we still have more time to find out if anything else is going to follow the results tonight. I'll send it back to you guys. Thank you so much, Laura. And you know what's so interesting about this is that in the normal primary, they have that Democratic unity breakfast. Mm -hmm. They have an opportunity to see each other the next day, to kind of make amends, shake hands, say aloha. In this case, there is no unity breakfast. We're not sure if and when the candidates will see each other mm -hmm. and what happens over those next six days. We want to show you those numbers one last time tonight. This is the statewide totals. Brian Schatz, of course, winning over by 1,769 votes over Colleen Hanabusa for the Democratic nomination. And when we break it down, you're looking right now at Hawaii County. Brian Schatz taking that 1,000, excuse me, 16,358 to Colleen Hanabusa's 15,858. And Maui County, Colleen Hanabusa taking Maui County with 11,388 votes. Brian Schatz with 11,166. So close. And there were some other races that were impacted by this one tonight. We had been watching from the beginning, from the, from the primary on Friday, Fe Hano Hano, the incumbent losing to Joy San Buenaventura. We we're awaiting because this is her district, and uh, Buenaventura has won that. And then. And looking at the Hawaii County Council, it looks like the incumbent takes that. Again, pretty wide margin there, but we did want to show you this, of course, because this is the impacted area. Office of Hawaiian Affairs was one of the other areas we were watching because for the at-large seat, this was their first primary ever, so the top six would be going into the general election. And it was really close between number six, Harvey McInerney, and number seven, Jeremy Hopkins, until this vote came through. So it remains as it is with Harvey, Harvey McInerney making it to the general. And these were the others in the at-large, so it didn't really change much of the order for OHA either. Still more of our at-large. Uh, participants. We also want to talk to you about Senate District 6. This is on Maui. Roz Baker taking that seat, incumbent, keeping her seat tonight. Of course, those 800 votes on Maui playing into these races tonight. Also, incumbent Justin Woodson keeping his seat. Uh, challenger was former Maui Mayor James Apana. We thank you so much for staying with KITV for all of your election coverage. Remember, you can get news anytime on your phone through our mobile app, on Facebook, and on Twitter. We'll have a wrap-up of all this and all of the day's news coming up tonight on KITV 4 News at 10. Hope to see you then.